We're Station and you're watching Army of One TV. We're Station from New York City. I'm Chris, the guitar player. I'm Patrick, and the singer. Amy. Basis. Yeah, so we formed in New York City. Uh, Pat and I met each other in uh, 2010, and we had one of those hallelujah moments where you know his style and his influences were very, very, very complementary to mine. So we started writing music, and we put basically a group of musicians together to start playing, and slowly filled in what would become Station. Um, you know, we went down to Nashville. We recorded an EP with Michael Wagner great thing and uh, then two years later we recorded an album on our own and once we released the album things really kind of started to fall in place for us we started traveling outside of the uh, Northeast we started we got a bus we basically started supporting other acts and uh, since then it's been a really kind of good thing for us to go back to markets in the Midwest and the South and stuff like that you know we found Emmy and our drummer Tony and solidified what is station mm -hmm. yeah it's a, it was um it's a wild ride. Uh, it's kind of funny though because when Chris and I had met each other um, back in 2010, we both basically had the same exact story. Uh, Chris was playing in a band uh, that he was unhappy with and he ended up leaving. Around the same time, I was in a band that I was unhappy with and then I ended up leaving. Uh, both of us started looking for, you know, our, our significant other, I guess, if you want to call it. Right, then we had the running from the field towards yeah. each other around the bone, we were talking about like living color. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool because, um, you know, what we what we started to create was something that uh, we kind of felt was, was very unique and raw, but very pure as well. Because uh, rock, you know, when, as we had seen it, it's kind of taken a, a heavier edge or a, gone an indie route or whatever, but uh, Chris and I both have this love for melodic rock as well. So when we met each other, for me, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, like it, it's a, somebody I don't have to compromise with. It's just like good melodic rock, you know, somebody who's very like minded and um, when we put the band together it was like this like it was very cool because it uh, you kind of say it's niche but at the same time it was like you know I feel like it's one in a million kind of thing that we were able to find each other in the vast wasteland of New York City and you know, kind of do this type of music we're lucky because too is that you know especially it's still this way now but you know you don't hear a lot of rock bands there are a lot of metal bands and there are pop bands and Pat and I like the just the right amount of metal and just the right amount of pop to kind of come back to rock so um, it was refreshing to find someone who pretty much shared my taste in having like pop like uh, Pat said melodic rock you know so I mean, same thing with Emmy and same thing with Tony yeah and then I, and then it, it's been it's been uh, kind of a wild ride since you know we started uh, started writing we started uh, recording and uh, the more music that we recorded the more opportunities we started to get you know first uh, when we released our EP that was when we got to play Rocklahoma for the first time it was, uh, it's, at least that year was the, I think it was the biggest rock festival in the country and you know just based off of our EP and so it was really 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 cool to see that what we had created was starting to like gain some momentum you know and then we went back we did the full length album and then we just yeah we, we finally left the Northeast I mean like aside from Rocklahoma we really hadn't gone out too far to anywhere yeah. uh, and then now we're just we're hopping all over the place you know it's cool it's very very cool oh. Emmy when Emmy came in that's actually like literally two months after Emmy joined the band that's when we actually started seriously touring the band mm -hmm. because before that we you know because Emmy came in um, at the end of 2015 and before that we did like three day weekends and we did you know and you know you travel down to Maryland you travel to Connecticut and you do that um, once we basically had Emmy, we had gotten to this point now where we had to support our album, and we all of a sudden were in Chicago, and we were in Kansas City, and we were in Nashville, and we, you know, all these cities that it was just like a dream because we had our bus because that became a necessity, and um, it was really cool. You know, yeah, finally got the, fun, yeah, finally got the finally got to hit the road, you know, and, and like for like really hit the road, you know, real. Yeah. And now we do it consistently, so it's become part of our business and part of our lives. Back, uh, we started recording the album back in 2014, actually, and uh, it, we, um, when we released the EP, you know, the, the idea was, you know, this is this is a taste, you know, this is kind of like what, like we were still kind of building our own sound in a sense. There was a lot of building in the band of like, 
where we wanted to go and how we wanted to present ourselves and like who like what was ultimately going to become the station product and uh then finally it just got to this point because the band has so much original music it's just it's insane so we finally were like we gotta we gotta release more of these four songs people love but you know people have been chopping at the bit for some more so uh, that's why there are 15 songs on the first album yeah too. exactly that was also yeah that's why we uh, we just like packed it all in we were just like you know 15 songs we basically maxed out the disc <laughs> you know um, but it was cool because when we did that uh, we finally got uh, to in to interpret what we've been doing live, like on on record, and it really even changed some of the songs for us when we did that. Because prior to that, it's it's all about live, it's all about the song, it's all about the very rawness. And then when we got to the studio, it was like we can we can layer stuff, you know, we can like have different sounds. That's what we're kind of finding now is that, you know, when we went into the studio to record our album and we, we worked on those 15 songs, we basically took what we were doing live and we translated it into an album and a recording to basically take with us on the road, show people who are interested in us already, someone who's a new fan. This is what Station sounds like. We just released a single, um, All You Need Is A Heartbeat, and we have another single coming out uh, with that gentleman over there, Mix. And uh, basically, what you can hear from it is that instead of it being, oh, this is a song that they translated live, there's a lot more studio magic in it. There's a lot more depth. There's a lot more consideration of saying, we now have the time and we have the ability to actually make music and give it the treatment we hear in our heads. So we kind of took that and we ran with it. And uh, like I said, you know, we released All Needs a Heartbeat two months ago. Yeah, two months ago, so. and then we'll release Never Enough probably in the next month, and then we're also currently in the studio working on a new album. So we're getting to really flesh out that uh, that experience. That's great because as we've kind of grown as both musicians and just experience and just people, people, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the songs take on new meanings. The songs also change in terms of what we want out of the song. You know, um, we made the joke the other night that one of the songs on our first album is very much like this and at the same time it was like well we do that live what can you do in the studio that's not the face that goes like that and you find out that there's a very different attitude when you approach stuff like that and that's how you basically create new music that shows growth mm. and the other thing too is that like when we got back into the studio um, well now that we're back in the studio having you know recorded at a couple different studios and, and really found our groove I kind of feel like this new this new record that we're working on it's very um there, there's not really a lot. It's, it's a lot more well executed, I guess, is kind of what I'm going for. Because before, it's like uh, you know, either relying on other people or trying too many things. This time around, uh, when we went into the studio, it became a lot more about the execution of achieving the sound that we want, and a lot less experimentation, which is good because. Um, you know, from from uh, you know un the unfortunately glory days of like we're going to write the record in the studio as we go. You know, we can't really do that. But at the same time, when we did the first record, there was a lot more rawness to it because we were sort of experimenting as we go. So with uh, with this new record, because it's so much more like executed, it's kind of like all right. So we have the rig that we're going to use. We're going to bring it in. We know exactly what we're going to do. A lot of it is just going in and just doing it. It's executed, you know? yeah. And, and the good thing too is that um, there's been very little that we've gone in and done with what we had in our head and it's it's changed. You know, oh, I don't like how that sounded. It's kind of like, I think it's going to sound good if I do it this way. And then we do it and it's like, it sounds good. But of course you can see on the second record, the one that we're recording, of course that it's like different musicians, like for example, Am in the band, the drummer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tony is not the drummer from the first album so not only can you see or can you hear the difference uh, in the different musicians but it's the, the band itself grew to to a, to another place you know like and, th and that's actually good you know like uh, if a band uh, I think I love the first album even if I wasn't involved but if uh, if the second album sounded the same it would talk bad about the band and say, like, oh, you're basically just repeating yourself. Like, can you do like, when I joined the band, they were already writing new songs um, and they are way different in a good way than the first album. So I'm really like, I, I love being a part of this, uh, the whole, you know, the band, but the, 
the recording of the second album, there's a there's it's it shows how the band is moving on and moving forward. And that doesn't mean that we uh, we don't like what we did uh, or they did, but uh, it's just you know it, it shows the how we grew up and the new uh, the new band members like me and Tony who's. Well, it also reflect kind of what, because like the thing, the thing that we found was especially when we made the first album is we were still kind of getting everything together. Um, and like Emmy was saying, you know, with the new musicians, it kind of comes to a new level. I mean, you're going to stick with the set tonight, and there's a bass solo, and Emmy's vocals are very powerful, with Pat, and it gives you a new set of colors and new paintbrushes to work with on a record. So all of a sudden, when you find yourself at this point where you say, "This feels good." Got this. You can make very e you can make music much easier, and you can make very differently to really express yourself. And uh, when you have all four, you know, there's uh, there's obviously there's good and bad to being independent. I think um, uh, the bad uh, really is is mostly just about money. Uh, when you have investors or capital to kind of do you know the megastar sort of thing, that's you know, obviously something that we do want to achieve at some point, but at the same time what's kind of cool about being independent is uh, we get to make every single choice of what we want to do, where we want to go, how we want to dress, what type of music we want to play. Um, so this is all our fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but you know, at the same time it's kind of like um, we we feel like what, what we're doing is very much us. Like we're not doing what somebody else is telling us to do. I mean, you know, and, and not to say that's necessarily even a bad thing, only because um, you know some of the biggest stars in the world are, are manufactured, you know, per se. But you know, it's it's part of the, the product. You know, it's part of what they're trying to put out, and it's not a bad thing inherently. But for us, what's cool is that. We get to be the ones sitting in a room, just being like, "What are we gonna wear? Like, where's the one? Like, what, what are we gonna write? What songs are gonna be on the album?" One of the things that those is interesting about where we are now as a band, um, just from the business side, like you're talking about independently, is that Station is very much settled into being Station, and you know we feel very comfortable in our own skin. We um, we feel like we make the music the way we want it. Um, you know, we're changing our styles in every song, not to deviate from what we are, but to just express a different side of us. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So, sorry, just, yeah. To, just to, when, when, to expand on that point, what, what I love about this band is every, every musical decision that we have made uh, has not been swayed at all by like marketing yeah, or you can tell that from our or, or anything like that. <laughs> when we settled and we've gotten to this point now where people can recognize what we do and what we like, and you know, I mean, who knows what the next album will sound like and that kind of thing. It's also a lot easier for us to present ourselves. So, you know, in order to reach the, the, in order to have the kind of reach that we want in the world, you know, and that's to be the first band to play on the moon, that kind of thing. You know, we, I mean, like any other rock band, we want to be at the Garden, we want to be playing in Tokyo at, you know, at, at Budokan, and, and we want that. And doing that independently is, it's a little, little bit of a stretch. So, you know, we're at the point now where we feel like we actually have something to both offer, but people who are interested in working with us can get a good sense of what we are. You know, I could, I could have seen how five years ago, seeing that we had, you know, new member at any time, stuff like that, someone who was interested in saying, I can work with Station and help them might say, well, what am I actually getting with Station? We've gotten to this point now where we're kind of like, this is it. This feels good, you know what I mean? And we're kind of at the point now where we feel comfortable saying that we're ready to expand. Like I said, we're, we're, we're going to be finishing up the record. Um, there's a lot more to do still, but it's uh, it's going to be... It, it's already sounding really awesome. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to layer a bunch more stuff on it. I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, mixing it as well, because uh, we are the nitpickiest dudes on this planet. Uh, but... Once we actually get that, uh, we're gonna play. We have a couple of shows lined up for the end of the year, uh, November and December. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back in New York. We'll uh, be back maybe in New York, here, actually. So we'll see. So and then, uh, you, and then next year, up. yeah. And then next year is uh, next year. It's it, we have uh, we have another festival that we're playing next year uh, already lined up in Chicago. It's gonna be a and, yeah, massive be a gotta, thing. We're, yeah. we're looking at probably if the album comes out probably around end of March, early April. We'll hit the road in May, and I don't see us coming off the road until probably the end of September. Um, and that's assuming everything stays as is. And 
good thing about Station is that it's never done that. I think that next year is going to be a, a big year for us. Just like last year, it was a very, very busy year for us. We played over 85 dates in support of the first album last year as a kind of band. So next year is going to be bigger, and uh, it's going to be a lot less sleep. The patient's 